they know what the best interventions are for me and that they know Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Casey Reyes. You can call me Doc Casey, the founding skin doctor feminist and a preventive medicine doctor. I have some patients who come to the clinic for the treatment of persistent skin conditions such as seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis. But did you know that there's a condition called SIBO psoriasis? For this episode, we asked Coach Sheila a long-time skin investor, if he could share her SIBO psoriasis journey with all of you. If you're interested, keep on watching. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell if you want to see more of our content. So I was at Luminis for a totally different treatment, and upon inspecting my face, Doc Casey asked me about the flakes on my skin, which I thought was just dry skin that was peeling. And then she said that it is a face dandruff or some scientific term that needs to be treated. So I thought it was just, it just needed moisturizing. So I just know that I have very dry skin. So sometimes that results in what I thought was just peeling of the skin, or I'd have redness, some discoloration. I thought some of them were sunspots or just pimple scars, and it turned out to be a lot more serious than I thought. First is taking care of our skin is part of our health, and also being comfortable in our own um, body and face is very important in whatever we do. For me in particular, I do a lot of face-to-face -face interactions and a lot of people look at my face and if I know there's something wrong with my face, it gets me conscious and I'm not able to focus on um, taking care of what my client needs. So it's important for me to be comfortable with my looks and feel good about myself. What I really love about Luminis is the holistic intervention that we both advocate for. So it's, it's not just taking care of our external health, external looks, but also everything that we put into our mouth, into our mind, that has that overall effect on our well-being. So whenever I have skin concerns, my go-to is really Luminis. Their team is really very good at diagnosing the problem and giving me different options and interventions and if i have like emergencies i call doc casey immediately so that we know what the earliest treatments should be does your skin appear oily and flaky it may be SIBO psoriasis SIBO psoriasis is an overlap between two separate conditions seborrheic dermatitis, and psoriasis, in which features of both conditions coexist. Seborrheic dermatitis is a common inflammatory skin condition presenting with an irritation in areas rich in sebaceous glands. It is thought to be due to secondary to an abnormal amount immune response to Malassezia yeast, which is a common organism on our skin. Psoriasis is a skin condition that presents itself as patches of thick red skin and silvery scales due to increased cell turnover, scaling, and epidermal inflammation. As a transitional condition between seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis, SIBO psoriasis has features of both conditions. It's a diagnosis given when a psoriasiform rash in a seborrheic distribution is spotted but the clinical features do not allow a precise diagnosis. It can be seen across all age groups but is most common in childhood, adolescents, and then increases in patients older than 50 years of age. It is often characterized by the following. A yellowish, greasy scale in typical seborrheic dermatitis areas such as the scalp, nasolabial folds, eyebrows, behind the ears and over the sternum or chest. Deeper red, more defined margins and thicker scale than normally seen in seborrheic dermatitis, less silvery scale than seen in classic psoriasis. SIBO psoriasis can also affect skin folds or the intertrigo. Often it becomes clearer 
which condition the patient has with time in response to treatment. The overall incidence is not known as clear case definition is difficult. Like both seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis, the pathogenesis of SIBO psoriasis is not fully understood. How is SIBO psoriasis treated? When the skin appears oily and flaky, the first reaction would be to clean it thoroughly to remove the annoying and embarrassing excess oils and flakes. However, this may be counterproductive as frequent washing eliminates the natural barrier of the skin. Sheila has a typical case of SIBO psoriasis. Our treatment will overlap between the treatment for seborrheic dermatitis and that of psoriasis. The response to treatment can help to determine if the patient is principally suffering from seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis as it's usually one of the other. Emollients Emollients are moisturizers that keep the skin soft and prevent cracking. We ask Sheila to apply topical keratolytics like urea, lactic acid, and salicylic acid to help remove the scales. The use of emollient is my first choice of treatment as they also inhibit growth of bacteria. However, the excessive use of emollients can also in turn encourage the growth of Malassezia, which might aggravate a seborrheic dermatitis component. In this case, I decided the better course of action may be to be aggressive and use Profilo or Intradermal Hyaluronic Acid. It is a revolutionary beneath-the-skin moisturizing treatment with the highest concentrations of hyaluronic acid. Made with a patented NICO technology, this unique hyaluronic acid injectable gel, which has a prolonged stimulating activity on the dermal cells, boosts and hydrates the skin at cellular level. As it is injected, it simultaneously stimulates skin cell receptors to counteract skin laxity and improve and restore firmness of the skin. With Profilo, the hyaluronic acid contents is three times more. That's why it's more powerful. Topical antifungals. Topical antifungals such as ketoconazole, itraconazole, and zinc are also very effective for seborrheic dermatitis but tend not to be so helpful for psoriasis. Topical antifungals have variable benefits in SIBO psoriasis depending on how much malassezia yeast are contributing to this condition. Topical corticosteroids and calcineurin inhibitors. This reduces the inflammatory response. For a very limited time, I may prescribe steroids to gain control over inflammation. Here at Luminis, we tend to prefer topical calcineurin inhibitors such as tacrolimus over steroids because it has less of the bad steroidal side effect such as thinning of the skin, easy bruising, or stretch marks formation. Vitamin D-like compounds The vitamin D derivative like calcipotriol or divonex reduces the inflammatory response and scaling in psoriasis and SIBO psoriasis. Newer versions have come out containing combination of calcipotriol and betamethasone, which is a mid-potent steroid, we call it divobet. Because steroids have side effects, I typically reserve this course of action and only move forward with this if the first three treatments don't work efficiently. Low light level therapy. Instead of using traditional phototherapy using UVB rays, which is usually used for severe psoriasis, we use heal light and low level light therapy for mild to moderate condition. These light emitting diodes deliver precise wavelengths of light as an effective and natural treatment for inflammatory skin conditions such as dermatosis and psoriasis. This therapy effectively reduces itchiness and inflammation and helping speed the natural cellular recovery and healing process of skin in general. Systemic medication. For very severe cases, we use medication such as methotrexate, cyclosporine, and even biologic to spare the use of steroids. It is important to note that while we can help manage this condition, there's no one treatment that can cure it all. There's no permanent cure for this condition. The best thing to do is to treat it holistically and preventively. Diet is something you can control. As I always say, food is the best invention, and the solution is what you place in your pantry. Always eat whole foods, unaltered, preservative-free, organic or naturally organic, gluten-free, and stay away from sugar and processed carbohydrates because these are highly inflammatory. 
Another thing, what you feed your brain is very powerful. It can help reduce inflammation or stimulate inflammation. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that chronic stress can cause neuroinflammation or activation of the resident immune cells in the brain, which is associated with increased inflammatory activity. Sleeping better will also reduce your inflammation and is a good way to naturally detox the body. And of course, best to take probiotics because it will not naturally heal the gut area, so it will promote less inflammation in the body. I hope you guys learned a little something from this episode of Skin Vesting. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the notification bell if you want to learn more from me and from Luminous.